Hi everyone, today I'm in the autumn woods here to show you the differences between 8-bit colour and 10-bit colour and more importantly, should you shoot in 10-bit over 8-bit colour. I'll be showing you also in post-production with colour grading whether it's really going to make that big a difference and is it going to be important for you and your type of filmmaking. At the end of the video I'll also show you which of those clips I just showed you now were 8-bit and 10-bit colour to see if you got that right. So what is 8-bit colour? Well you've got 8-bit versus 10-bit as we've been discussing here and with 8-bit you've got reds, greens and blues, your RGBs. So with each of those you have a certain number that is associated with the possible colour shade values per channel. So each channel red, green and blue has a possible colour shade value of 256. Now when you times those by each other that comes to a grand total of 16,777,000 216 colors now that sounds like a lot and it is and it's really good for your shots but when you get to 10 bit color this increases so so much so with 10 bit color with your rgb channels red green and blue the possible color shade values go up to 1024 for each of your color channels so it's five times the amount per channel of variation in colors that you're getting so from your reds to your greens in between those to your blues you're getting a huge amount more and when you times those together you're actually now capturing in 10-bit 1,073,741,824 possible color shade values. So this is a huge increase. And what it does is it allows your color shades between each color in your images to be blended much smoother so it looks like a smoother image. Here you can see the 8-bit color where there's banding between each colors. And with 10-bit color, you're getting a much smoother gradient between each color. So it looks much, much softer on the eye when you're looking at your actual images. Now we look at the 8-bit colour shots, you can see that the coloration on this is still really nice, it's not a bad looking shot at all. You've got nice yellows, oranges, greens, the brickwork on the right hand side in particular where there's more reds so is quite interesting. And then with 10-bit colour it just steps up in a more dynamic way and because you're capturing so many more possible colour shade values per channel, it's a much smoother, more dynamic look. Going back to 8-bit colour, it starts to look a little bit washed out now, a little bit faded perhaps. And this is going to depend as well on what unit you're watching this on, if you're watching on a 8-bit colour monitor or a 10-bit or on your phone. This may change a little bit on how obvious the changes are between shots. But yeah, you can see with a 10-bit colour, it just looks much richer in colours and all the way around. On this one where we're in, in a bit more shaded kind of area and the colours are a bit more rich anyway on this sign, the difference between 8-bit and 10 colour is very, very minimal on this one. But when there's lots of light, you can start to see a huge amount of changes. So if we look at this outdoor shot I got in London, where there's a lot of colours all around, if you look at the house in the back left where the stripes are going across there's that creamy color in the middle and then when you've got the 8-bit and go into 10-bit color that completely changes to yellow it's an amazing difference and this isn't filmed in log or flat this is shot on my iphone 12 in natural profile so you can see the colors changing drastically now for this next bit on color grading with 10-bit i use log v3 so that way i was able to get the most out of the 10-bit color and with 8-bit I use log v2 so I could get the most out of that colour. That way it would be the fairest way to compare these both at the same way and in the same time. With white balance I stuck with the cloudy preset of white balance because I want to use the sunshine one. Because I was under so many trees it just made it faded. Whereas with the cloudy one I got the colours that I was seeing in real life. Now with 8-bit colour grading you can see already before we even put a LUT onto this log v2 that the dark blues and the light blues from right to left are separating already. With 10-bit colour in log v3 even though this is very desaturated, we can see that that sky is already looking a lot smoother from right to left. Now, if we go into the colour tab, I can apply Filmic Pro's Log V2 LUT from their website. I highly recommend you download these. These are very nice LUTs. And click on that to see what it looks like. You can see it looks better, but you're getting much more banding now as we're pushing the colours to the limits or beyond their limits with 8-bit colour. And the dark blue on the right is really banding as it goes towards the lighter blues on the left-hand side. You can see particularly 
around the central areas. There's stripes going across, that is what's called banding. So essentially it's pushing the colors beyond what they can do because there isn't enough variation and possible color values in this image with 8-bit color. Now going back into 10-bit color, if we actually apply the Filmic Pro's Log V3 LUT to this, you can see how stunning the sky looks. You don't have that issue of banding. You've got beautiful blue skies from right to left. And even though it is getting lighter towards where the sun is, you're not getting that horrible stripes across the sky, the banding, because the colors, there's so many possible color values that there's plenty for this system to play with. And you're actually getting a really nice smooth sky. So these kind of 10-bit color images are really great for landscapes, that kind of stuff, outdoors, anything really, to be honest. And 10-bit color really shows what it can do when you start to see big landscape images like this. And by the way, if you're interested in smartphone filmmaking, which I'm guessing you are, otherwise you wouldn't be here, then hit that subscribe button right below this video right now so you didn't miss out on more smartphone filmmaking content and hit that like button whilst you're there as well as it helps this video and channel grow. Now, one way that's really clear to see the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit is here. If you look at this little brick wall on the left-hand side, when I go to 8-bit, everything looks a little bit more faded. Then when I go back to 10-bit, the colors are more richer, they're a bit darker in the areas that they are darker. Whereas eight color bit, it just feels like it's lacking a bit of oomph and a bit of dynamicness where the 10 bit, it captures everything you see in real life. Now I'm gonna let you see what you got right with the 10 bit and eight bit color challenge. I personally got quite a few wrong, but let's see what you get for this. Now in the first clip, this surprised me actually, even though I filmed it, it's 10 bit color. I thought with the yellow, it was quite dark, but I guess the color of it was already dark, so it didn't make a difference whether it was eight bit or 10 bit. With the eight bit here, you can kind of see it was a bit faded. The greens aren't quite as deep and as rich. 10-bit color here you can see largely as well from the leaves around it. 10-bit color on these signs, 8-bit color on these leaves which actually surprised me because they're quite deep green. And you can see with the leaves again that it's 10-bit color because the browns and the oranges are really popping in this one and the variations as well. Now it look nice in this but it is 8-bit color so it's a little bit faded in areas. Got 10-bit, 8-bit on these leaves which is a surprise although they're quite a variation of colors again there so it's a bit tricky on the eyes. This one was 8-bit and what you start to learn through these clips is actually that when they're put side by side, it's quite hard to tell which one's which. When you've got a series of 8-bit or a series of 10-bit and then see them side by side, you can kind of tell. But I mean, if you've got an older device with 8-bit color on there, I wouldn't rush to get the latest just to have 10-bit unless you're doing professional footage for corporate work or, you know, narrative films, that kind of thing. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about Filmic Pro, which is the app that I use to make these films and videos and tutorials, then do look at the video playlist just here. And if you want to know more about other stuff to do with smartphone filmmaking, there'll be something here as well. But I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Bye bye.